Today is really about accentuation. And again, we've already talked about accentuation in the sense of llanas agudas, esdrújulas sobre esdrújulas. We know from prior lessons that accents are usually marked on words in order to indicate stress, um, especially if it violates a natural stress rule, right? So if it's not um, prosodic stress, instead it's orthographic stress. Today we're actually going to be talking about why we use accents in words that look the same. So if you notice above here, I've got me with an accent and me without an accent. You'll notice that it has nothing to do with the pronunciation. I'm still going to pronounce it me. Me. I pronounce it the same. However, the difference is what it means. So if I use me, that says in mi mochila, which means my, right? Like my backpack. Whereas me is like from a mi me gusta o para mi. And so this is used as kind of a referent a referent pronoun, para mi, a mi, me gusta, right? So this is a referent that's referring to myself, usually used in the context of um, an indirect object, whereas this is used as a possessive adjective. So that accent really just tells me the difference of its use. Same thing with el and en. El with an accent means he, whereas el without an accent means the. So that's why I say el libro, no accent. But él es guapo, right, for um, with an accent. We also have sí and sí. Again, pronounced the same way. Sí with an accent is yes, like sí se puede. And sí without an accent means if. Like, si tuvieras mucho dinero, um, um, comprarías muchas cosas. If you had a bunch of money, you would buy a bunch of stuff, right? So that's an example of an if clause. Tú, right, we'll use for you. This is for a subject, you, but tú, without the accent, means your. Again, a possessive adjective. Este, meaning this, and it's being very explicit about that. So, like, este es mi amigo Juan. So, this, in the sense of presentational speech. But if I use este here, this is a presentational or demonstrative adjective. So, este libro versus este es el libro. And so the real difference here is that this is an emphatic this that can be that can sit as a noun, right? Whereas this is an adjective that has to modify a noun. So este libro versus este es el libro. All right, and then we have se and se. So se with an accent means to know. In fact, it means I know. So if I say lo sé, I'm like, I know it. You don't have to tell me more about it. Say here is used as a pronoun, and we've used it for many things. Reflexives, we use it to take away culpability, right? Like, se me cayó el libro, or we use it for passive voice, right? Um, se habla español en la clase. So this is used for a myriad of reasons. Um, it's really just a pronoun that's used, and usually to take away um, responsibility from the um, subject noun. Te with an accent means T. Tomo te, right? And I like T, but te as a as a pronoun here. So without an accent, it means like te gusta escuchar música. You like to listen to music. Te referring to my indirect object pronoun. So again, you might notice some patterning here, right? So subject pronouns tend to have accents, and things that stand alone, like as a subject, um, things that are referring or um, verbs. And then we have other things that kind of um, don't use accents. And again, it's kind of, unfortunately just kind of pure memorization. So let's go ahead and look at a triple threat here. So we've got esta, esta, and esta. So notice that there is actually a difference in pronunciation here. So esta, as we know, means to be. Like, él está en la clase de español. He's in the class. But this one, esta and esta, Notice that the pronunciation is technically the same, esta, esta, right? Esta, like este, is used to say this thing, but it's a feminine thing, like esta es mi, mi, mo, mi mochila, right? This is my uh, backpack, whereas esta mochila es mía, right? So that, or this, um, why can't I think about mochila? Oh, this uh, backpack is mine, esta mochila es mía, and that's the idea here, is that again, they're differentiating uh, parts of speech. This is activates as a noun, and this acts here as an adjective that modifies the subject noun, or even an object noun. Now finally we get to the last component. We've got these interrogative words. As you know, interrogative words are like who, what, when, where, why. In Spanish they tend to be like como, cual, donde, cuando, and anytime it's used in question form as an interrogative, we're going to mark that accent, donde, 
Cuando. So donde here means where as a question. Cuando here means when as a question. However, in speech, sometimes we find that they don't have accents. And that's when they're acting as adverbs or complementizers. So a complementizer basically just um, takes a sentence, takes an independent clause, and uses it um, to coordinate with either another independent clause or a dependent clause. So we've learned actually in Spanish about our anchor, cuando, right, with imperfect and preterite, you'll notice that as an anchor, it acts as a complementizer. It coordinates a preterite phrase and imperfect phrase. Again, I don't use an accent because I'm not asking the question, when is this happening? I'm just saying this happens when that happened, right? And then donde in the same way. I can say, where is this thing going? Like, donde esta uh, el perro? Donde esta el perro? I don't know where he went, right? Versus I could say the question, something with donde, like, estoy en la clase donde aprendo mucho. I am in the class where I learn a lot. Notice I'm not using this as an interrogative question. I'm using it as a complementizer to coordinate two structures together. So that, my friends, in a nutshell, is what we've learned about when it comes to accentuation with uh, words. Sometimes I have the same word, but the accent makes it completely different in its meaning. So hopefully that helps you with your exercises today.